What's up guys, Cyber Houdini here and welcome back to your daily dose of gaming. It is Monday the 31st of May, the last day of May. Tomorrow is like officially June. It feels like summer, it really does. This whole weekend has just been really, really hot here. Holy crap, we're having a bit of a heat wave, but it's been lovely. The, the country's opening up a little bit. Things are starting to feel semi-normal again, which is, which is lovely. Lovely, lovely to see. I'm starting to see a lot more uh, smiles on people's faces as well, which is good, which is good. We've got a, an exciting week this week we're kicking off. Last week was huge. We got a lot of like pre-E3 announcements, including um, our very first look at Horizon Forbidden West gameplay and Dying Light 2. We got a release date for, for that, which was great. Hell yes. So things are, are and the Far Cry 6 as well. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing week. So hopefully we'll get more of that. Um, I know uh, E3 itself does not start till June 10th, so we got some time. We got some time. It's going to be exciting. I'll be um, watching all that live. If you guys care to join me, we'll be reacting to all the news firsthand here. Speaking of which, we're going to kick off today's Daily Dose with some exciting news for sure. Hell yes, here we go. So Coach Media, or Coach Media if you want to call them that, uh, they own a lot of IPs, a lot of well-known IPs, including Saints Row, Dead Island, uh, like Maneater. Uh, let's see what else. Like they, they own... The Homefront series, uh, is a Kingdom Come Deliverance as well. They own so many. They, they're one of those kind of, um, um, I would call them like publishers, I suppose. But I think they're part of the Embracer group. So they just own a lot of IPs. Kind of like what THQ Nordic is doing right now. Just buying up a lot of IPs. Um, so there's a very good chance we may see Saints Row 5. Or what will be called Saints Row 5 at E3. They're going to do their own very own little stream which is the first time they've ever been doing this horizon gameplay was amazing right oh my god i'm so happy it's coming to ps4 as well a lot of people would say it's holding things back but that's nonsense like there's games that come uh, to pc and you can play them on like a 10 year old pc or a brand new 3090 you know like that it's nonsense it is just in a name and you don't want to leave like 110 million fucking ps4s out in the dust like that it's not fair be plenty of time for all that, you know, and it's so hard to get hands on a PS5. So I'm super glad for that. That's going to be amazing. I would say that'll probably come out in sometime in October. I think it will launch this uh, year. I think they just held off on announcing the launch date just because they wanted to have that kind of big moment at E3 as well. You know, Sony will do their own thing, another state of play, showing off what's coming for the rest of the year. You know, there's a lot of good stuff. So I'd say one of those things will be like they also didn't announce um, a next gen upgrade for Horizon Zero Dawn, the first game. So I, I think that'll be something else that'll come as well. But yeah, about about uh, Saints Row, I know people have been slowly kind of. Um, going away from saints row it's been getting wackier and wackier and then when we finally got to like get out of hell it was just completely jumping the shark so it'd be cool to see them go back to something closer to saints row 2 saints row 3 that kind of stuff back to like the the good old kind of uh saints gang day you know i think that would be something they might do might be a chance the, their last game they put out was agents of mayhem which is actually on sale right now for about two euro two dollars honest to god like it's on the store it's not even you know, if you buy it in a bag and book it. So you can tell it was a, a major, major disaster, that game, unfortunately. I think they were chasing Fortnite and chasing, like, uh, Avengers and things like that. And it just was a foolish endeavor, I think. If it drops in October, it'll be a gift to myself. Oh, yeah, I hope so. I hope it does. That feels like a good date first. I re It really does. Like, maybe November. Who knows? I was saying before, like, Sony don't really care too much about what other games come around their games like they don't care if there's a battlefield or call of duty uh, they don't mind about that at all because it's their first party big game I, I think god of war ragnarok will probably early next year like february march april something like that but they'll keep this fall for horizon it looks absolutely astonishing i, I was watching uh, digital foundry talk about it they usually go down and, and break down every game by its like frame rate and all those little fancy stuff that um we can never pronounce that's going on in the background like chromatic aberration and all <laughs> so who comes up with these words but yeah so they were breaking down the trailer for uh, horizon forbidden west and it was interesting for sure uh, there's a lot of stuff I spotted in the trailer as well that really just made me like, you know, like wow factors, right? My jaw was on the floor. One bit I noticed was while she was rolling in the sand, there was just a whole lot of sand in her hair, which is so cool. Just little things like that I love. 
and we just got a small brief look at Aloy swimming underwater. I can't wait for that. It's going to be amazing. The amount of color and the coral and everything. Oh, wow. Wow. Like, no game is really uh, open world kind of action adventure game has really done um, underwater exploration properly. You know, Assassin's Creed has tried with Odyssey and Valhalla. Valhalla, not so much. But Odyssey, they really did try, especially with those kind of crystal clear Mediterranean waters. Um, but it was still just like, go down, get this treasure, that's it, done. But I think... Uh, Horizon Forbidden West really wants to make it a part of the story. I actually like underwater exploration uh, to a degree. I used to love it in the old Tomb Raider games. It was really fun, uh, you know, the race against oxygen, trying to solve a puzzle. And yeah, it's pretty kind of cool, panic inducing. Yeah, breathtaking for sure. Super excited. They, the one thing I. Uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is pretty much perfect, but the one thing it definitely needed to improve was. Uh, the melee combat, not that you used it that much anyway, but now that they've improved that so much, I, I'm super hyped for that. I'm so glad they did that. Looks super cool, looks like it's its own uh, combos and things like that. Hell yeah, I'm, I'm down for it, I can't wait to see what else. There's been a lot of weird stuff on Twitter as well, some guy, some guy just took it upon himself to talk about how Aloy doesn't look as feminine as she did in the first game. Just a complete moron, basically, you know? And of course, thankfully, the internet just ripped into him. Just a, a silly, silly take altogether. So silly. I don't know how these men actually operate in real life. I I, I feel so ashamed of my own sex sometimes, I swear to God. I, I, honest to God. And his name is even like Alpha. Alpha J or something. He needs to lay off this, uh, tes testosterone injections and stuff. Yeah, because Aloy looks... Fantastic. She looks I, I thought she looked even better in the first game. She's got all these cool little tribal stuff going on She's got so much more little like little gadgets that are on her and everything she has on her She seems to be able to use as well like she did the smoke bomb She had this cool EMP charge in her spear. There was so much stuff It's so cool to see that kind of improvement because um Aloy's uh, Outfits and armor sets in the first game were such a cool thing uh, such a cool idea I really love the metal butterfly one. I always bring that one up. Even though it didn't give you that much uh, protection, I just love the whole design of it, especially when the game kind of centers around, you know, this kind of uh, tribal caveman style mixed with um, these futuristic ruins of what's left of Earth, you know? So to have an armor based on both was just perfect. That's my favorite armor in the game. I do like the, the one you get, I think, for 100% and the way you get the, the armor that basically deflects bullets and things and... I want that's kind of cool with the shield around her. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Hello, Cyber. How's it going? Hello, Bernie. How's he, how are you doing? How was everybody's weekend? I know it was Memorial Day weekend for you guys. I think today is actually Memorial Day, right? Hell yeah. I hope you're having a good one. I hope you're having a barbecue or something nice like that. We're just going over. Uh, Coach Media will be doing their own little live stream. Uh, they basically are in charge of like Saints Row, Dead Island. There's been talks of a new uh, Time Splitters coming. If you guys haven't played Time Splitters, it's a classic FPS series that kind of disappeared for a long while. It it, it kind of came, it took inspiration from the classics of like GoldenEye and uh, Perfect Dark, but it, it really did its own thing, and it was it was cool, very very cool. Um, the the last one that came out, I wasn't the biggest fan. It was the Day, Days of Future Past or something, or Future, one of those. No, that's an X Men movie. One of those games I knew I wasn't a big fan of, but we'll see. Maybe they'll. There's already talks of them remaking it. Maybe remaking the second game as well. That'd be cool. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, like I was saying, they 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 also um, own like the Homefront series and uh, Man Eater, and uh, I think they own or published at least uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance as well, which was that uh, medieval game, kind of like. Uh, Oblivion and that, you know. Weekend was decent. Lovely, lovely. So, yeah, they'll be doing this. It's called a uh, primetime gaming stream. <laughs> June 11th, uh, which will be slotted in very nicely with uh, the IGN Game Fest. Uh, we'll have so much, so much going on. We'll also have um, Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Festival. There's just so much going on. I can't wait. I'm super excited. Holy hell. There was even talks of a new Metro as well. I think they're in charge of that as well. We'll see. They've just recently done an enhanced edition of Metro Exodus. If you haven't played the Metro series, I, uh, I know you're a fan of uh, first-person survival games like Fallout and, and things like that. I, I definitely recommend those games. They're fantastic, especially Metro Exodus. It really takes it into the next gen. It felt like the, the leap between The Witcher 2 and The Witcher 3. I was blown away by it. I love it. I, I would play it again for sure. 
Um, so yeah, we'll see where they go with that. Now, I had ended that game in a very good ending, so I don't know if they can bring it forward. But I'm glad for them. That's um, I think they're a Ukrainian studio, 4K, I believe. Um, uh, and yeah, they're, they're good for them. You know, I like to see there's so much talent coming out of Eastern Europe. It's amazing to see. All over the world, there's so much talent. I'd love to see it. So yeah, it's nice. Whenever these guys start doing their own uh, streams, I know it might feel like a lot of stuff to catch up with. But they tend to try and keep them all nicely slotted together, you know. Like we had Dying Light and Horizon pretty uh, well together. It was like an hour in between, so that was fun. I don't mind that kind of stuff. It gives you enough time to breathe. And the way things are going with E3 this year, which is all digital... Uh, they're just everyone's doing their own thing and i think it works out for the best uh, trust me to keep all these kind of announcements together nicely packed into a stream is so much better than having to basically hunt down every little piece of news um on the internet it takes too long it takes and, and and games end up like falling through the cracks so yeah keep an eye out for that hopefully we'll get new uh, saints row news i know agents of mayhem was a, a bit of a failure so we'll see you're playing some Remnant from the Ashes, Barney. Very nice, very nice. You enjoying it? I want to get their, their next game, which is uh, Chronos from the Ashes. Alright, there was a, a brand new uh, Japanese trailer for Tales of Arise. This is the new game in the Tales series. Any JRPG fans out there, this game looks astounding. Like, we, we've definitely gone to the point of the Tales series where they needed an upgrade. And this game really, really, wow. It puts, it puts so many other series to shame. And I can't wait for it. So uh, a lot of the, this trailer is just showing off a lot of the the arts, which are very famous in um, uh, the Tales series. But it looks it looks incredible. This is coming out in September. We've already got our uh, main characters. Kind of cool. It's giving me a little bit of Tales of Vesperia vibes, where you've got like a princess and her bodyguard. The box art is just gorgeous. I am so down for this. I can't I can't wait. It's it as far as I know, it's just single player. Most of them are. After uh, Tales of Berseria, which was, I would say, one of their darkest JRPGs, uh, it's nice to see that they're keeping with that. I think Dragon Quest XII seems to be going in that direction as well, and it's about time, you know? Um, when you when you kind of deal with stuff like um, long-running series, it's very hard to change the art style without pissing off a lot of the fans, so it's a super scary time. Especially for things that have been going for, you know, over 35 years with uh, Dragon Quest. It's crazy. So it's nice to see them trying that out. I mean, you've got like a legendary artist like Akira Toriyama. So you know that uh, they're going to probably keep something similar. There. Here's some actual screenshots from the game as well. As you can tell, like it's kind of using a, a little bit of a, a cell shaded art style. Just around the edges, I've noticed. But uh, it's definitely got a far more realistic look to it. Um, I, I am so ready for this. It looks fucking insane. You've already gotten a, a couple of little details on um, some of the supporting characters. Because yeah, the Tales of series usually uh, have a nice little roster of characters for sure. So we got a couple of PS5 details. Awesome. I usually get a lot of my news from Resetera. Um, free upgrade if you own the PS4 version. That's always nice. Ben Nash. Load time when you enter battle. Okay, cool. performance mode 60 frames a second on the 4K mode. Lovely. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Alright, cool. I am so down for this. So this is coming out in September. Hell yes. Alright, cool. I've been enjoying it. Yeah, I just recently picked up the... Um, the DLC. Because it went on sale randomly again. So I said, fuck it. It's like five bucks each. So... I'll eventually get around to playing that. Today we're going to be playing a little Biomutant. It finally came in the mail. Yay! So I'm going to try and make Gizmo from the Gremlins in Biomutant. We'll see how that goes. I'll be fun. Alright, a little bit of a leak. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to show this. But uh, Two Point Campus leaked over the weekend. This is from the developers that just released Two Point Hospital. Which is a hospital simulator. They're, this is probably going to be one of their big E3 um, reveals. But it looks like they're going to allow you to create your own college campus, which is awesome. In a world where, like, SimCity has kind of died off and EA ran Sims into the ground, micromanaging and, and putting everything into DLC. It's nice to see that someone else has risen. Like uh, These games are definitely, especially Two Point Hospital, is heavily inspired by Team Hospital back in the day, you know. So it's cool. Everybody wants them to do, like, Two Point Movie Studio and Two Point This and that, which is cool. I think these guys have a... Uh, a long successful uh, future ahead of them. This looks amazing. I love it. This has like um, it's kind of cool. It's got like a medieval vibe to it. I like it. 
some jousting going on. This is so pretty. Yeah, this will this will be probably at maybe like Xbox's indie showcase or something like that. Super gorgeous. Don't know if you guys are a fan of these kind of games, but they're really cool. Let's see how far you can zoom in. I love the art style. It kind of weirdly reminds me of um, Wallace and Gromit and that. All right, cool. So that's two point campus coming, which is great. Let's see what else they can do. All right, on to the next little piece of news. Uh, apparently, now, sorry about the. It's just unfortunate Twitter has so much compression, but apparently Leon Kennedy is coming to Rainbow Six Siege. You know, he's not looking quite like himself, but there you go. This is a, this is another big leak, um, but it's 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 a funny one for sure. I, I see a lot of uh, Resident Evil um, collaborations happening. Like recently, we had Dead by Daylight and Resident Evil coming together. It's kind of cool to see that, you know. I like to see developers get together. It's not just one big exclusive uh, thing. And it's probably also part of their... I think they had, like, Jill Valentine in there as well. So it's probably part of their uh, celebrations. Hell yeah. All right, on to the next little piece of news. We have um, a, a, a lovely little video from a brand new Shadow of the Colossus-inspired indie game. Oh, yes. This one is called... Let's see. Where is it? It's called Strange Shadow. Yeah, Strange Shadow. There's a certain Twitter um, channel I follow. And uh, the... Pretty much anything I miss, I, I usually get from this Twitter channel. But this, it's cool. So it's gonna be like a boss rush mode, something like, um, was it Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption, where you can just fly into the next boss and the next boss. I mean, this looks very promising. Uh, there's been a lot of talks of Unreal Engine 5 lately, so you're just gonna see games get better and better, and indie games get better and better. Another uh, little very cool game I wanted to play was uh, Blue Fire. Did get my hands on that? We don't want to play. It's supposed to be like a 3D Hollow Knight. There's just not enough time in the world to play all these games, but I will find a way. Yeah, we'll see. Animations for the big boss didn't seem the best, but we'll see. As long as they have uh, forms of like climbing up and that, this is cool. Very, very cool. I like the main characters as well. They look cool. All right. And the next piece of news, we have a nice little update for uh, Genshin Impact. Now, I don't know if this is going to be their big summer update, but it seems to be so far. It's called uh, the Midsummer Island Adventure. It's their summer update, but they are meant to be going to E3. So I'm thinking they may have, like, a, might be able to show, like, an expansion further down. So there's going to be new summer outfits for Jean and Barbara. And a brand new character, Kazuha. A whole new area. That's, that's really cute. Cool. I've been playing a lot of Genshin lately. This one seems to heavily involve Klee. Thank you. There seems to be some kind of, um, you'll be able to drive around on a ship or something. It's cool. Hello, OGG. Hello, man. How have you been? How's your Memorial Day weekend going? You see, this game is doing unbelievable sales. And they seem to be able to scale things up pretty fast. Like, look at this. I think it's cool. Even if it is just a mini game, to be able to drive around on a ship is, is fun. Um, but yeah, they seem to be able to scale things up very, very quick, you know, they have, once you reach a certain level, there seems to be like a battle pass similar to Fortnite and that, and they've been creating new events nearly every other week, it's insane, so, yeah, there's a big team working on it. I think, I think on mobile alone, it has already earned like $1 billion, there you go, Ah, oh, version 1.6. Very cool. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Like, you get to a certain point where you're like, okay, it's getting a little grindy now. But it's completely free to play. You can, there was even a PS5 version put out uh, for free as well recently. And it is so buttery smooth. One thing, like, Breath of the Wild is a, a masterpiece. And this game gets um, compared to it a lot. And I, I don't think I don't think that's fair. I think um, this game kind of stands on its own once you uh, get into the combat. It's just pure anime goodness. But uh, the only thing that really copies from it is maybe like the Paraglider, which every game has now, including Horizon Forbidden West. And the little stamina meter beside the character. That's about it. I have it off, which means the first time in a couple of decades. Lovely, lovely. I'm glad. You all deserve a nice cold beer and some, some ribs or something. Dynamite, thank you for that host, dude. I appreciate that. Appreciate you. Hope you had a good weekend, my English brother. How are you doing? We're just talking about... Um, Coach Media, who own a, a lot of uh, the IP, like uh, Saints Row, Dead Island, Time Splitters, Kingdom Come, Deliverance, Man Eater, uh, Metro, uh, so many. They're doing their own little stream for E3, and there's heavily, heavily rumors that a new Saints Row 
is on its way. And we're hoping that it'll stay like Saints Row 2, Saints Row 3, you know. Kind of pull back the craziness a little bit. And go kind of center around the gang more, I think it would be pretty cool. And yeah, there's been a long rumor of, uh, and confirmed rumors that uh, Time Splitters is coming back. Time Splitters! So I'd be hyped for that. That'll be happening just around uh, all the big streams of E3. I'll be covering all this live. We'll do, you know, our, our usual uh, watch along E3 live stuff that we I do every year, which is super fun. We also have, um, as I was saying, Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest and IGN's doing their thing. And then each of the big platform holders will do their thing. Like Xbox and Bethesda have a big live stream coming. Uh, Sony will do State of Plays. And Nintendo will do their Nintendo uh, Directs and Treehouses and all that stuff. So yeah, it's going to be huge. We've already got massive news last week with Dead uh, Dying Light uh, 2. Uh, Far Cry 6 coming in October. And we had... Uh, yeah, Dying Light 2 coming in December, and then Horizon Forbidden West gameplay. So it's just, it's all popping off. It's been so warm here, I love it. It feels like summer. Played some Control yesterday. Very nice, very nice. I'm glad you're enjoying it, man. Wait till, wait till you get a, a certain power, it'll uh, change the game. For you. Red Bull and burgers for me, sober for seven years. Oh, nice, dude. Congrats. Congrats. No, I know a lot of people who don't bother with that. Like, even me, like, I'm your typical Irishman, but I, I don't, I could take it or leave it when it comes to beer and, and drinking in general. I'm, I'm all good. I am the way I am. All right, on to the next piece of news. Some great news. A Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. There's meant to be a sequel in development. This is done by the legendary creator himself, Iga. And, and of course, uh, we, we all, like, you know, wondered what would happen after... You know, Castlevania, would we, we ever come back? But he's he's out doing his own thing. He's done Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Then he's done like a 16-bit a version with Bloodstained Curse of the Moon and Curse of the Moon 2. They're absolutely fantastic games. You know, this is where Metroidvania got its motherfucking name from, you know? Where every single 2D uh, hack and slash game has borrowed its whole blueprint from. And I'm so glad to hear this. It, it, it definitely deserves it for sure. Ahoy, Cyber. Hello, DPG. How was your weekend, man? How's that new PC treating you? Are you still on the Halo binge? I hope you are. I can see your Halo. So, yeah, this is great news. Absolutely great news. I'm not sure, like, yeah, they were saying that the original was kickstarted. That was a, a big reason why it ever happened in the first place. Uh, Bloodstained was one of those games uh, along the same lines as things like Mighty Number no. 9 and that, where uh, Kickstarter went through, like, a really bad period of games just... Either not working out, uh, people running off with the money, or, you know, getting way too much money and then bringing out something that was just a complete clusterfuck. So, it was, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, it's great to see a success story like this. For real. And I'm, I'm happy to see where that goes. I even played it on the channel. Absolutely love that they nailed every little piece of it. If you haven't played it, most likely you can get it on sale. It's pretty much on every single platform right now. So, play it. Enjoy it. Drinking isn't the problem for me, but stopping is. Ah, I see, I see, yeah. I feel you. I'm on mission 8 out of 10. In the game? Damn. Have you, so have you unlocked that big ability? I don't want to spoil that. We unlocked the ability. You know. When you jump. Do, 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 do. Alright, next little piece of news. This is a brand new game uh, called Necromunda Hired Gun. It is out. It's all over the place. I think it's out like tomorrow, but you can't get it physical till the end of the month. It's in the Warhammer universe, but it is basically like Doom. You can buy it right now on the store, uh, pre-order it for like thirty dollars, and and its full price is like forty dollars. Looks so cool. So it's like Doom, but you have this cool dog, Necromunda hired gun. I want to play the shit out of this. So bad. What a great price as well. I think it's about eight to ten hours long, which is about normal for these shooter campaigns. Everybody's been hungry for more Doom. This is definitely Doom for real. But having all these cool little... The dog helping you out fight. We've had a couple of Necromunda games. And there's a lot of Warhammer games as well. But this, lo this looks a bit special. Seems to be 60 even on uh, the old consoles, which is good. It's definitely taking a, a massive uh, page out of Doom's book. things I trust in this life. The Your PC is treating you well. Very nice. Mastiff. Looks like you can customize your little doggy. So yeah, if being Warhammer, you're gonna see a lot of 
rust and steel everywhere. I haven't been playing much channel since I beat Reach. Noise. So this has been massively gruesome uh, executions as well. Yeah, that's Necromunda. Look at that dog. I like the name as well. It's it's based on a. There's a whole like series on it. A whole like uh, figurines and board games and all that kind of stuff. Come. You unlock that power. How cool is that? They should have given you from the get go. Oh, I love it so much. I didn't want to spoil it for you. Being able to fly around. Holy shit, that's awesome. So many games that hold off superpowers like that till the like the last couple of hours of the game. You're like, thanks. Like uh, in Concrete Genie, there's something that changes the whole game at the end. You're like, why didn't you give us this the whole game? So cool. All right. So these are a couple of games that are coming out this week. Seeing as it's Monday, we might as well go over what's coming out this week. And one on the list is the Ghosts and Goblins remake. It's Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. This is actually coming out this week. If you if you haven't played this game, this is a classic Capcom game. It's um, yeah, it's known as one of the hardest games to ever exist, and it's well known. For you run around as the little knight and having your armor fall off and you run around in your boxes. It's quite fun. But yeah, it's cool that they're bringing this back. Um, I like to see this kind of stuff happen. Capcom are obviously making a shitload of money with Resident Evil and, you know, Monster Hunter. So it's nice that they're paying their dues as well. That's why I would love to see like things like Dino Crisis come back. This, this is what I was saying before, you know, if, if, you're, if you're, um, your games are doing well, if a publisher's doing well... You know, it's nice to remake games for sure, because they do a lot of that for money. But it's nice to make certain games just for the fans as well. And this game is one of them. Like, you don't expect this game to sell millions. And there's a lot of newer fans that just will not play 2D games. I've seen it. Like, they're, it's Fortnite or bust for so many people. Um, so, you know, this is definitely a love letter to the fans. And I appreciate that, you know. It looks fantastic. It looks absolutely fantastic. I'm not sure what the pricing is on it. Give me a second here, I'll have a look. I, I can't see it being too expensive, but uh, super cool. Now, maybe they'll bring back, like, Super Ghost and Goblins or something. Who knows? It says Switch there, but I'm not sure it's coming to other platforms. Let me double-check that as well. Yeah, we got Switch, a PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and, P and Steam. So, yeah, even though it says uh, Switch down, it would be probably best on Switch. That's what I think. It's all good. All right, right now I have it at... 24 pounds is probably like 30 dollars which is a little bit but yeah it's, it's probably worth it. it's probably got all sorts of cool stuff in it you know it's worth it to play again pricing's always rough on on smaller scale games but i mean these kind of game you you pick it up and play it on your on your switch you know you could get thousands of hours out of that What's the next game you're going to play on uh, on your PC? So that's Ghost and Goblins Resurrection. That's coming out this week. Next uh, on the list, we have this very cool game called The Last Kids on Earth and the Staff of Doom. A nice little indie game. I try and promote indie games as much as I can because um, they're all fighting for just their moment in the sun. And this looks really cool. Looks like it's a, a nice little uh, co-op game. Kind of reminds me of um, uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors or, or Plants vs. Zombies or something like that. Last kids on earth and the staff of doom. I don't know if this is an old remake or something. Why do I get the feeling like it is? More the more I say it, the more my brain's like, yep. I know they're trying to bring um zombies ate my neighbors back. There's some kind of like spiritual successor game and that. Every time I load this playlist it surprises me. I'm like, I've never heard this. Yeah, I'm usually talking over it, so anyway. So yeah, it seems to be... I'm trying to say, is it like four-player online? Recently, I... Well, it was probably a couple of years ago now, but... Played, uh... Crossing Souls, which was pretty special. We're gonna be playing some Biomutant after this. It finally came! And, uh, I'm gonna try and make Gizmo from... Uh, the Gremlins. In it. Because you have the power to manipulate your DNA and make your own little guy. This one's scheduled for the 4th of June. It's literally Friday, but it looks super fun. Whew, it is so hot. Yeah, here we go. Single player, shared, split screen, co-op. All right. All right, cool. Awesome little fun game. 
You don't see many couch co-op games anymore. I'm not a platformer type gamer, but I got Ghost 1.0 from the makers of On Epic. I've never heard of it. Cool. I suck at it because I don't play. It's all good. I mean, I grew up playing platformers. I took such a break that I suck at them now. You see me play Mario. Actually, I find sometimes the 3D Marios are tougher than the 2D ones. But that's just me. It's called Ghost 1.0. Interesting. Yeah, oh, I see it now. Interesting. Cool. Seems to be some kind of collection as well, isn't it? Come on. He just like, you want me to play a video? Oh, we can't be doing that. God damn websites. I'm trying to think it's... it's Chrome. All right. So this is Ghost 1.0. Very nice. Very nice. Oh yeah, you can get Ghost 1.0 and an on Epic collection. Very cool. Another Metroidvania. Sometimes I wonder do some of them use that just... Usually what makes it the Metroidvania is when you get powers and you go back to old levels and open up doors you couldn't before. That, in, in a nutshell, makes it that. But you know, it usually comes with the whole idea of uh, being 2D and platformer. Yeah. Alright, let's get into let's see some gameplay of this. Is there gameplay? Sometimes they might not have them. Oh wow. Oh it's very detailed. I like that, it's kinda 2.5D. Wow Oh look at that map, yeah, that's straight up yeah, the a map like that, that's straight up Metroidvania right there. Hell yeah. Nice. Well I like when uh, you get point damage. Tell you one thing, I was playing that carry on game, which is basically like reverse Reverse hero game. You play as the monster killing all the scientists. That was so much fun! Yeah, I love how colorful this is. Actually kind of reminds me of Cross Souls a little bit. I try to discover... That song always reminds me of that. Alright, next little piece of news. We have... We did the last King uh, Kids on Earth and the Staff of Doom. This one I thought was really cool. It's like a mech shooter. It's called Wing of Darkness. Straight up mech shooter. You know I'm a huge fan of, of mech shooters. And I do want to play Zone of the Enders on the channel soon enough this one looks awesome like especially in the world i was just talking about it but the panzer dragoon remake did not fare too well that was just kind of pooped out which is super sad because you don't see these kind of games anymore and it makes me sad so it's nice to see this this is called wing of darkness looks kind of wild kind of like a mech suit oh yeah nice some nice dodging it, the targeting system actually reminds me of uh, metroid prime a little bit where where you aim the camera, the aim, the aim is actually where you move. So it kind of looks like it's on rails, but it's not. Maybe you're just always moving forward. And uh, let's see. My only gripe for controls, which is better optimized, I can crash twice. Oh, that's that's weird. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That, that's just, that's another one of those games they push ray tracing. That's another one of those games that just really we're we're at this point where these old consoles, these eight year old consoles, are just not been able to do it. Like I I, I well believe that this is going to happen with Horizon Forbidden West. People have already been talking about it. it's like how the fuck are they going to render this on this old ass console, you know? So what'll probably happen is they'll push it back down. I think some of those options should be there for the old consoles, and they're not. I mean, they want you to have like a w Xbox One X. They should allow you to do like performance mode and quality mode even on the old consoles because i'd be okay with pushing things back to 720p if it allowed it to be um uh, you know crystal clear but I, it crashes suck dude it really does luckily i have not had a great a game crash on me on ps5 yet i break games all the time though but they've never crashed me to the dashboard yet I, i've ha i've had to go out to the dashboard myself though I suppose the same thing i'm sorry that's happening to dude because it can make you think about it. they'll they'll have a big uh, e tree as well remedy but they've always kind of been known to do things on their own have you played um quantum break dynamite i think it might still be on uh game pass maybe it's not that's their uh, their other game you should give that a shot it's really cool um the live action tv show part is a bit wild but uh, they are working on over five games right now they're doing a single player campaign for crossfire x which is a military shooter that it's meant to be multiplayer owner, but they're doing this hugely cinematic um, story for it, which is really cool. And then they have a couple of games they're working on for Epic. There's rumors that one of them may be Alan Wake 2. Control will probably get... Uh, I think it actually... They, they hinted that Control is... A sequel is in uh, pre-production, you know? Yeah, Quantum Break super fun. 
So it's also a third person shooter, but you have time manipulation powers. So they, they like to do that a lot. Each of their games has a different dimension, basically. So Quantum Break is time manipulation. Control is matter. Matter. So you're manipulating shit all over the place and you're messing with dimensions. And then Alan Wake is like messing with your mind. It's like psychological stuff. Supernatural. I also just got MechWarrior 5. Nice, nice. Hell yes. I'd love to see them bring back Armored Core, but that is from software. And they are so busy with, you know, Elden Ring and who knows what else. Um, I don't know what's going on with From Software, but if I was them, I would be stepping up production like crazy, you know? Like, they're, they are just re world-renowned. Everybody wants their games. So they should, they should like, triple their studio. But, see, that can lead to dilution and... Uh, uh, dip in quality, so it's, it's super tough. But we're like, we're almost nearly four years after Sekiro now at this point, right? Well, it's a good. Well, probably not that long, but it feels like that long. But even I was saying that about um, Horizon Forbidden West. People don't realize it, but by the time it comes out, it'll be four and a half years since Horizon Zero Dawn. So not wild. Like time has gone out the window, and, and I know 2020 in terms of development doesn't really count because how bad COVID just ruined everything. So I understand that, but still, like for a sequel, you know, you hate to see it. Some back in the day, the Crash games, the Spyro games, they were coming out every single year, and you've had like Call of Duty is well known to most of the developers, uh, and Madden and FIFA and all them. They used to have like nine months of development because they needed to get it out every year so it would only be nine months of development and like fucking marketing and all that and you know trying to think up the ideas so it's crazy that you see that and most so usually a sequel if it's based on the same engine will be around two years usually you know give or take but like i said yeah 2020 is it's just unprecedented all right cool on to the next little uh, game we have coming out this week is called astalon tears of the earth this one's kind of cool Nice little 2D platformer, very colorful, very catchy music as well. I love it. If you're fans of like Mega Man and um, like Shovel Knight and Celeste and all those, this looks pretty cool. Astalon, Tears of the Earth. This guy straight up looks like Mega Man. Three unique characters, which makes me think of uh, Trine. Trine was super cool at doing that. They're great games. <laughs> But yeah, this is just pure, like, retro, new retro goodness. It's cool all you guys are trying new games and that. I always say, you know, if you ever have a bit of downtime or you're not really interested in buying any of the new games or they're too expensive, it's always nice to try something. Because most of us have a laundry full of, or a closet full of uh, games, you know, a laundry list of games. I know I do. You, all you need now is to get, like, one month of PS Now. Or one month of Game Pass, and you have enough games to last you for ages. Anyway, that's Astalon Tears of the Earth. That's coming out this week as well. Very cool if you love a little bit of classic. I think there's even a demo up there as well. And finally, we have Stoneflight. Now, I don't know if this is actual gameplay in this, but it's super beautiful. This game is gorgeous. It's um, it's another platformer, but it's it's like something like the Borrowers. Just pure nature goodness. A very unique art style. Very special looking game. You know those indie games that really just light you up? A stone fly is an actual fly, I believe. But in this case, it's like a, she's got her own little robotic thing. Like, look at this. Does this not look like an anime? God dang. Like I was saying, I'm not sure when the gameplay actually kicks in. Looks like it, it, it's definitely hand drawn. There you go, I'd say that's probably gameplay right there. There you go. Nice, the UI fits it very well. So it's got this beautiful kind of nature meets mechanical thing going on. I like it. Especially with the uh, Grounded that we had recently came out, uh, which is basically Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. That's a super fun game, I, I enjoyed that. Well, I played it while I was in Early Access, so it was a little bit oof. Um, and they even added like a, a an arachnophobia mode where that you could get rid of the giant spiders in it. Good God! Hello, how's it going, Eric? Oh, you guys are so nice for coming in. I know most of you have the day off today. I hope you're spending it well. Yeah, it is pretty early. Yeah, I always forget. So you guys are like eight hours behind me. It's almost seven p.m. here. That's crazy. Time zones suck. 
So we're just checking out a couple of new indie games coming out this week. This one's called Stonefly. I like it. I'll tell you one thing, I don't know if it's me, but trailer music for games are just getting better and better. And then you've got like the Call of Duties who just keep using the same remix of Nirvana. It's like, well done! Original, you fucks. You fucks! Alright, let's see. Let's see what platforms this is coming to. Stonefly. There we go, it says right there, I'm blind as a bastard. I'm blind as a bastard, thank you. Thank you. I think I know that flight school, I gotta look them up. That sounds very familiar to me. I have so many devs like rolling around in my head, living rent free. Yeah, there you go, look, it's pretty much, a, it's even on the Epic Game Store. What did flight school do? I'm so sorry, I'm so stupid. I, I know them from something, I feel like, maybe I'm thinking of night school, which was... Boop. Boop. Oh, wow, no, they did Creature in the Well. <gasps> Creature in the Well is such a great game. It's basically um, a hack and slash pinball game. Uh, Creature in the Well is one of the more unique games, indie games that have just completely flew under the radar. It is on Game Pass. Uh, you've got you've to play Creature in the Well. It's so unique. So think of hack and slash, but pinball. Hello. Happened to Ricochet. All the goodish. Let me get into it. And the art style is pretty beautiful too. Look at this. You can get all this stuff going in the middle of combat as well. Something very sci-fi about it. I love it. It's a really unique idea, right? This is what we need. These are the developers we need to support. I love it. Very, very sci-fi. It's got the sci-fi comic book thing going on. I dig it. Creature in the Well is this one. This one's out a little minute, like a year or two. But it's on the Game Pass. No excuse. I played a little bit of it, I think I did. Boop. So they're they've already they're already working on their new game, which is called Stonefly. These guys don't mess around. Wow. Wow. Flight School is their name. Very cool. My god, that is just pure talent. Never seen a dev put out games so fast. My goodness. Now you kind of see where the art style is coming from. Their 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 game artists are stunningly talented. Wow! All right. Oh yeah. Almost 11 a.m. Damn! That's crazy to me that I could be having my dinner and you guys having your breakfast. Titan Souls. Yeah, yeah. Not since four half. Oh my god. Yeah, that's the worst thing. If you're up at that time every day, when you finally get a day off, your body's like, Yeah, so? No, I feel you on that. This is really cool. Looks like combat is... It kind of weirdly makes me think of Pikmin, but it's all mechanical. Hell yeah. So that's Stonefly. Lots of great games out. Um, yeah, keep an eye out on Necromunda. I'd love to play that one. Good price, too. So that was today's Daily Dose of Gaming. Beautiful. Thank you for joining.